the uproar here is the cyclicality of markets linked into your world of economics possibly is done and there will be a more leaden, non-volatile trend because central banks have dragged us down to the zero bound. I don't see this in the academic literature. Is it an original idea that needs to be tested? To begin with, it is being tested. And frankly, I think that the zero bound or the driving down on interest rate to zero was emphasized, has been emphasized as the way in which the crisis that emanated 12 years ago came to the system, so-called unconventional policies. Yeah. But if we are talking now about a recovery, getting out of it, coming back to normalcy, I think that the zero interest rate has exhausted its benefits and it's time now to think again, how do we come to the highway from this particular detour? The return to the highway in which interest rates are at normal level, in which financial industry can perform well because at the present time, pension systems, insurance, life insurance, even banking have to redesign their business model to accommodate zero interest rates, which makes no sense. I think that at this stage, we will need to bring back the other policy instruments. The other policy instruments have to do with fiscal policy, have to do with structural policy. Today, the greatest danger to the economy's growth comes from fragmentation. The world is global, policy making is local. The pressures on policy makers come from domestic pressures. And if you have great fragmentation within economies, you will end up having also great fragmentations between economies and the bridges that are so essential for the functioning oh. of the global economy may be hemmed. Your voice is so important, I have to get this on record. If we begin a path to normalcy, do we sustain a leaden, non-volatile state or do we maintain the normal, historic boom and bust cycles that Rogoff and Reinhardt have talked about? Which is it? Is it binomial? Is it bipolar almost? Which is it? It's, no, it's not a law of nature that it will be either or. It depends on the policy. Let me give you an example. Fair. Here the recovery started and suddenly the trade war came in. Trade war means you break a bridge between important partners. This creates volatility. Then there is a glimpse of hope that this trade war may be settled, at least as phase one. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly the markets like it again. A Martian coming down to Earth will say, hey, we have volatility. But let's understand that volatility is a reflection of the signals mm -hmm. that policymakers give to markets. And in a market in which financial markets are important, that they are growing to be more and more important, that's the market in which expectations about the future right. are transmitting itself to current behavior. So let's be very careful. Words matters, expectations mm -hmm. matters. And if things are still not done, but they are expected to be done, volatility already comes in. To your acclaim on to, on, on the Bank of Israel, and folks, let's make clear here, as we mourn the late Paul Volcker, people talk of Frankel as a Volcker equivalent with the courage of what he did in Israel years ago. You had a toolkit then. Lagarde this morning with Francine talks about tools. Orphanides has written about this authoritatively at the Fed. What's in the toolkit at the zero bound? Well, the toolkit today is much less potent than what it used to be. Which is Bridgewater's point. It's but less point. Absolutely. But it is also not a curse of nature. It is, again, a policy maker making. What do I have in mind? The most important tool in the policy arsenal is interest rate. Of course, you can always speak about macroprudential policies. You can speak about guidance, how to manipulate expectations. You can speak about many things, but let's face it. It is the interest rate that the central bank is setting, which is the uh, jewel in the crown of policymaking mm -hmm. arsenal. If, we, if it is being stuck at close to zero, in addition to the damage 
to the financial industry, it also co projects that the monetary authority can do yeah. in the future less than what it did in the past, which is another reason to wake up yeah. the other policy instruments. I think that the only game in town syndrome in which central banks have become too central to the debate right. has to be changed. It's a very, very dubious compliment. 